Aloha, and this is F5 On Demand, and welcome to In 5 Minutes or Less with Peter Silva. And today, I'm going to show you, in 5 minutes or less, the Layer 7 Denial of Service and Brute Force Protection in Big IP Application Security Manager version 10 with a special thanks call out to OnlineStopWatch.com. So let's start the clock. So I've logged on to a Big IP ASM version 10. Right here on the welcome screen, you can see there's my applications and security policies, some statistics. But to get to the Layer 7 DOS and brute force protection, you'd want to go to Anomaly Detection. And here, the first one is the Denial of Service Attack Prevention. And so here are your various web applications that are available to protect against and the policies that you may or may not have set up for it. In operation mode, I'm going to first just set it up as transparent, so that means we'll start detecting stuff, but we're not going to block anything just yet. That would be under blocking mode. The first is the detection criteria, and so there are a number of criteria that need to be hit before the prevention takes action. And the first one is latency, and so latency from ASM to the backend server itself. If latency is increased by a certain percent, or by a certain number of milliseconds, then that's the initial trigger, if you will, to start watching stuff. So we're not going to start blocking on the just the detection. We're going to, if it hits that level, then we're going to start watching a lot more close. And you can obviously set these uh, per your own specifications for your situation. Under suspicious criteria, then, we'll start uh, tracking transactions per second, increased by 500%. Uh, 200 transactions per second here. And so once the suspicious criteria is also hit, that's when we start taking action. And so when latency is increased and TPS is increased, we will then grab the user's IP address. So it needs to be two triggers that then starts the action. Once we are in protection mode or, or ASM finds that an attack is happening, then we can do a number of preventions. So the first one is this client-side integrity defense. And actually, all that is, let's check it, is a bit of little JavaScript to go back and check if that's an actual browser versus a botnet or some other automated mechanism that's sending these denial of service attacks. So this may clear up the situation right away. If it doesn't, then we can do source base rate limiting. And so remember, once we hit these TPS and uh, the long-term average versus what it checks every minute, we can then just block out that specific IP address, that specific user. And then, if that might not work, and it goes through various um, iterations of this. If one doesn't work, it'll go on to the next one. It'll go on to the next one. Then, we can just start rate limiting the URL itself, so allowing valid users in, and then malicious users don't get in. And then finally, this prevention duration, either unlimited until the until the attack stops or for a certain amount of seconds. So just do your protection for a time frame and then open it up again or do your protection for the entire length of the attack and then when the attack, when the numbers come back down to what we've set here, then the situation is better. Now we move on to brute force protection. And we don't have any here, so let's create one. And here again are your web applications. I'm just going to choose that one. We can do explicit, so HTTP www.com forward slash. I'm going to actually put the logon page, login, sorry. It's a form based. There's other types, NTLM, basic, and digest. The parameters for this, you name PWORD. So when it sees those, it knows what to look for. Uh, logon attempts from the same client, you only get five, and re-enable re logon after a certain amount of time. That's what we want there. We're going to again do transparent. The same sort of situation, failed logon attempts by, and the detection criteria, both detection and suspicious, again, two need to be triggered for it to work. The same sort of prevention policies here. And then we have some strings that need to appear. So that should appear in the response. S-U-C-C-E-S-S, -S. oops, 
and fail response code 200 for instance and then you could certainly fill in the rest and hit create and there we have it we now have a brute force protection set up let's see where we're at all right within five minutes and there you have it how to set up create both the layer 7 denial of service and the brute force protection with application security manager version 10 from f5 networks this is peter silva for f5 on demand thanks for watching